Let's join Sri Sridhar Chityala. Sri, Namaskar and welcome to P Guru's channel. Namaskar and good morning, sir. Sir, uh, so what has been the latest things that have been happening in the Hunter Biden laptop case, sir? Well, I think the latest story, uh, the latest satire in the Hunter Biden uh, story is that uh, while the media, while uh, the the Trump uh, family as well, the Republican Party has been uh, beavering away at the uh, at the social media tech companies in terms of blocking, thwarting, uh, yeah, and prevent news uh, from reaching the mainstream. Um, the latest development is that the the, the, the laptop uh, appears appears there's, there's a kind of co big controversy or big sensational development. The the laptops to be have been featured. The one with the ID number seems to have been featured in some unrelated investigation on money laundering, anti-money laundering, back to 2019 in the FBI investigation. So many from the FBI, ex-current officials, have validated and indicated and indicated that to be the case. So should that be the case, then is this going to be a big blowout in terms of, you know, uh, deep is how deep is the uh, is the controversy and how deep is you know, potentially a criminal offense in terms of entanglement and involvement. So it will take a completely different turn. Uh, and I think Trump right throughout has been uh, has been hammering home the same point, which is to say, would the mainstream media have let him go for anything even remotely close while they have been Hunter is absent. Joe, we don't know where he is. Obama is the campaign scene, right? And Joe is silent. So it only means there's more to come. Well, uh, today is going to be the fight between the two contestants. Uh, be sure to tune into your televisions. It's just going to be a really fun. Perhaps they are trying to uh, keep him away from any kind of uh, negative limelight that might be there in case uh, Joe Biden is uh, campaigning. Perhaps they're trying to shield him. Who knows? But certainly not answering this question is actually hurt the Democrats. And I hope that, uh, you know, Joe Biden puts up a strong performance. Because I know that uh, Donald Trump is going to come swinging and uh, might even lack punches. So we'll wait and see. Sir, the other ongoing saga of the stimulus uh, here are some new numbers from the Republican side, but also perhaps a new hardening of stand. Where do you see the economy going, sir? The stimulus package, that is. And just to transition this point, which is namely to say that, you know, the microphones are going to be muted uh, in, in the debate. I have a feeling, as you rightly said, he's, not go he's going to be coming uh, out of the pool, maybe, maybe swinging and punching, as you kind of rightly uh, indicated. So it's going to be an interesting debate. With regard to uh, the the stimulus package, it's quite astonishing that Steve Mnuchin, as well as uh, Nancy Pelosi, are still discussing. We are moving into Thursday, uh, having gone, you know, having taken a, st a strong stance at 1.6 to 2.2 trillion dollar, you know, gap between the Republicans and and, and the Democrats. Uh, it looks like they have moved up the curve. This is they here is the president Mnuchin have moved up the curve and the gap is now almost less than $300 billion, $1.2 billion. So it's, uh, it's, it's quite astonishing in terms of both sides want to cut a deal and announce it to the market. But the magnitude of, uh, nobody seems to comprehend, the magnitude of this transaction, if it, is, if it succeeds, 4.1 trillion dollars of capital, 4.1 dollars of stimulus, unheard of, injected into the economy, which is equal to somewhere close to 20 percent, or even if you can, it's, it's definitely 20 percent of uh, the 19 2020 GDP numbers, 19 point prediction, right? So it's quite gigantic, 4 trillion. On the other hand, the Republic was defeated in uh, in the Senate in the uh, in the Congress you mean at the, at the Republicans okay. was uh, Senate uh, was a defeat by which I mean 
that you need the majority for it through. You need not, uh, you need a nice, you know, you need a 60 percent, uh, 60, 60 percent or mm. 60 seats to get through. So they didn't get the enough numbers, right? So to pass through, it's not a simple majority. They have to exercise mission if they want to do that. But anyway, so to uh, to cut uh, to get back to the to the main question, uh, it is an astronomical number, and uh, Republican Republican Senate have taken a very strong stance, which is they would not ask anything of this magnitude, and they're prepared to wait, leave alone the election, even going into New Year so that they can have a full impact analysis, what it means for the future. So um, lots of things going on there. And in the meantime, we uh, shift our gaze to China. China is pressurizing a lot of nations not to recognize Taiwan, seeing that it and the other members of Quad are certainly moving in a particular direction. Um, also here that Brazil is also now uh, stopping purchase of vacation from uh, China. So one by one, some of the biggest countries where the huge are beginning to move away from China. What do you make of it, sir? Well, um, you know, the Sinovac vaccine, uh, which was contemplated, been rejected by Bolsonaro, uh, the president of Brazil, uh, and he said he would buy anything from the China. Um, now, to your question, which is around Taiwan, um, you know, Japan, India, many of the South uh, East and South China Sea nations have recognized Taiwan and its kind of independence without explicitly stating that the one China policy is both in Tibet and Taiwan. They are moving towards, you know, recognizing these two nations, or more specifically, Taiwan. Taiwan has also cut a big trade deal uh, with uh, with India on uh, you know where the Taiwanese pictures uh, uh, be it on the pharmaceutical side, but more importantly on the hardware and conductor side, uh, are going to set up factories. That's the that's the scope of the list. This is after United States endorsed uh, China to come into tech and set up uh, FAB. Uh, for the TSMS, you know, Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing Corporation, SMC, right? So all this is causing alarm uh, in the Chinese, which is to say they're conquered or uh, checkmated in the land. In South China Sea, they are facing huge amount of threat. However, there has been attempts to uh, mount a campaign against Taiwan. They have seen not only the Taiwanese defending themselves, but the nations defending themselves. Uh, Taiwan is a thing itself. Then you have the Taiwan-India uh, deal, Taiwan-US deal, Japan deal. All this is pointing to the fact that China, which remained un is being shaken. Now, Sweden, you mentioned the point, you know, Sweden, you talked about, uh, you know, not, not going the line on the 5G and China threatening them. Brazil not accepting the vaccine and they have not yet issued a threat. So effectively, persona non grata is the word that's the best to, because nobody, nobody wants China any further. One second. And uh, in, in, uh, in continuation to that thought, Looks like has really been surprised by the strength of the Indian response at the line of actual control in the, and this has set aside some of its other ambitions. We don't know because if you look at uh, say back from April onwards, China has been lashing at almost all of its nations, and now it finds itself in a bit of a soup situation because their troops are not to fighting in that altitude. And, and they have 60,000 amass there. What are your thoughts on this? How, how are Chinese going to save face? Well, you know, is, uh, China is in a gridlock. Uh, the latest reports emerging from, uh, you know, the Indi from India and the other external agencies is they miscalculated the tenacity of the Indian army and the Indian government. China also uh, miscalculated the tenacity and the determination of the Indian army to build infrastructure at a pace and magnitude that would cause 
tremendous kind of deterrence for any type of Chinese action. So India is not only built infrastructure, India is armed to the teeth with the Rafales being early delivery, the drone, U.S. Air Force landing about um, a, a, a week ago in a remote kind of a border location, the France and Israel saying it would support India. So forget India's tenacity in its own right, which is to act as a deterrent. And, uh, and then, of course, uh, the problem uh, which is not being reported is there is less motivation for the Chinese PLA army to be in those high fighting. So yesterday's reports indicate Indian army went to the Chinese territory, went into the Chinese territory and put measures in place, whatever they are, to make sure that there is no further misadventure by the army. So therefore, I think it's, it's not only defensive, but they've taken some offensive posture from a defensive point of view. So all this implies China is in a, in a no-win situation. They try to entice Nepal and occupy territories into Nepal. The visit of the, uh, the head of the Indian army um, to, uh, as an unusual protocol to meet with not only the Nepalese, but head of the Nepalese army is also sending kind of shivers uh, through to the spine of the Chinese government. So in an unusual kind of press release, the Chinese foreign minister made two specific observations, one around Taiwan and second around uh, India. The reason is next week, there will be both two dialogue, both the different Mark Isher and um, and uh, uh, will both be in person in New Delhi uh, just one week after the election dialogue. But China seems conquered and checkmated in the region, not yet, but also in South China, but more specifically in the uh, in the Ladakh region. Certain signs are shifting rapidly in this election. Uh, I have not seen this kind of a movement, swift movement, uh, moment, uh, momentum change, I beg your pardon. Um, we just want to tell you that on YouTube, we are having some difficulty streaming today. This is highly unusual. Be that as it may, unfortunately, we will not be able to live stream it today on YouTube. We will put it on YouTube as soon as this program finishes. So the next question is looking at the markets. Toyota had its record fifth consecutive quarterly uh, profits. Make of it, this stock has certainly been through going through the stratosphere. Um, I'm sure that it can really hit the numbers that the Wall Street thinks it can. What are you on that? So it's Tesla, I think you meant Tesla. Oh, what did I say? Oh, Tesla, Tesla. Oh, um, uh, Tesla hit the uh, uh, in a consecutive fifth, uh, you know, fifth quartings, uh, buoyed by uh, the number of cars, uh, number of car sales. There was this magic number that was of 500,000 uh, new car sales for 2020. Um, it looks like that number is is a little bit of a distant reach. Uh, one takes off, uh, you know, another 180,000 cars to be new cars to be sold. As also that number in the fourth quarter, the um, uh, the buoyancy is about the successful scaling of. of brands within Tesla and globally the sales. This is something that people did not expect, the volume of sales. Even the Shanghai factory is in operation. Um, they have a contemplated uh, in India. Both are, you know, very highly uh, uh, dominant uh, auto markets. So the uh, energy, uh, the revenue momentum is built around, uh, around that, that's what is built around that but also people should not forget, you know, the SpaceX was a successful launch, right? So that demonstrated this company has the ability to execute There's some kind of value attributed to what exactly they're going to do on their space. We already got the first news around that SpaceX, that Tesla and Microsoft is to cooperate, but we don't have much more news other than that. So I think this is what is driving up the momentum uh, of of uh, Tesla stock. And on that, we will bring this episode to an end. Namaskar and thank you very much, Sridharji. We'll be back same time, same channels. Thank you, sir.
was a pleasure.